The farm is the CIA's uh, clandestine training facility. It's in, it's in Virginia. It's in Virginia. And uh, it's where almost all of your operational training is going to take place. Everything from counterterrorist driving to all of your weapons qualifications to airborne, where they, they train you how to jump out of a plane and how to use a parachute. Um, then they, they do the, the nuts and bolts, um, how to recruit spies to steal secrets, exercises. You know, there are other facilities too, uh, things like um, bomb training, um, specialized stuff out in the desert, out west, but most of it, 80% of it is at the farm. So you go, they've got, they've got dorms, I guess you could call them dorms, um, and uh, classrooms and tracks and shooting ranges and anything you need. I mean, the thing is like thousands of acres. So anything you need to do, you can do at the farm. What was your favorite thing that you did there? You know, everybody loved shooting the most. Uh, I it, it was the driving for me. It was the driving for me. My God, I got so much out of that class. I still use it. I still use what I learned all these years later. Um, we did things like, the, the course was colloquially known as crash and bang. So you crash cars and you shoot guns and, you know, and then you do cool stuff like one, one night we did, well, we did, we did night shooting a lot, but we, we did like rocket launchers. Mm -hmm. like where else are you going to do rocket launchers? And grenade launchers and blow shit up and blow cars up and, that was so much fun. But for me, the driving was better because they put you in these scenarios where I got to be careful. I don't go into too much detail, but you got a blindfold on, okay? You're in the driver's seat and you're driving like a mile an hour with a blindfold on and they're steering for you. And they say, okay, I'm going to take the blindfold off and you have two seconds to react. Okay, so they take the blindfold off. And just as they take the blindfold off, you notice in your peripheral vision, there's a guy with an AK-47 who's trying to open your door. And then there are two guys in front of you and they're, they have their car is in a V, but which way is it? Is it a V like this or is it a V like this? So if it's a V like this, you got to gun it and crash right through. If it's a V like this, you're just going to wedge yourself and they're going to blow your brains out. So you have to put it in reverse before this guy shoots you with a paintball. Um, and you got to go reverse, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. They teach you how to hit the brakes, neutral, spin around, drive without ever coming to a stop. And you take off and they, they call it getting off the X. So you do this three times and, you know, you fuck it up one time, you're dead. That's it. You're dead. So I was good at that. My response time was very quick. It was under a second. And, and it's little stuff that, that people forget that get you killed. You forget to lock your door. Always, always, always lock the door. Always. I mean, even now, it, the, the risk of being carjacked at a red light or stop sign or something is, is, is real. <clears throat> that lock may buy you an extra second or two seconds, which is really all you need to get off the dime. So I was good at that. And then they marry the two guns and cars. So you go through these very elaborate, complicated exercises where they, ha they have a device on all the cars where they can kill the engine remotely. So you're just driving down the track, minding your own business, and your car dies. 
And so you you drive over, no, you 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 drift over to the side. Now we're using all live ammo here, by the way. Um, and so really, yeah, you pull over and you hear a gunshot. Now they haven't shot directly at you; they shot in the air, so you hear the gunshot. So you have to you have to crouch down so that they can't get you through the. You have live ammo; they don't. Uh, they can't get you through the windshield, and then. You put it in park, you crawl across the, the seat, get out the passenger side, lay on the ground, you've got your gun, and you have to look to see where the shooting's coming from. Well, the, the shooting is coming from these robots that they have. They're, they're automated, and they've got little targets on them, black and white rings. So the thing is shooting at you, it's shooting blanks, and you're on the ground and you have to, you know, bang, bang. And then you hear a shot over there, bang, bang. But sometimes you can't quite get it because the robots turn to the side or the, the targets turn to the side. So on your belly, you have to go to the back of the car and then get it from that angle. Well, there was one, there was one point that I just couldn't get a clear shot. What it was, across the way there was a van and the the sliding door of the van had opened and the robot was in the van and the robot's firing at me and I just can't get a clean shot. So I pop up and I shoot out my own windows. They give you these beater Ford Tauruses. I shoot out my own windows and I go bang, bang, and I get it. So they, they sound this air horn, which means, you know, weapons down. So you holster your weapon. And the guy, the instructor comes out, he goes, well, you passed, but damn it, Kiriaku, you just cost me $900 in broken windshields. I said, I couldn't get a clean shot. I'm sorry. We did this one exercise. It was at night. We drew straws to see who would go first, and I went first. So all you know in this scenario is you are in a flea bag hotel in, in El Salvador. Good luck. So it's just a, a table and a chair. And, and it, it looks like a flea bag hotel. I mean, th th it's like a Hollywood set. I mean, they they this is real life. They make it look like it really is going to look in real life. So you're sitting there, not really sure what to expect. And there's a knock on the door. And you say, who is it? And then the door opens. And it's these two guys, and one of them is holding a, a, a vacuum cleaner. And they're saying, uh, housekeeping, senor, housekeeping. And I go, I don't need housekeeping. I don't need housekeeping. And then the guy, the second guy behind him, pulls out a gun. He goes, bang, bang. He shoots me with two paint pellets. And I go, fuck. I said, I never saw that coming. And one of the instructors says, if you're in a shithole motel in a shithole country and two people just walk into your room, kill them. And he's like, don't tell anybody else what the exercise is. So I go back out to the van. We're all sitting in the van waiting our turn. And I got these two paint things here. And one of them just says, shit. And I said, yeah, I can't talk about it. So all eight of us failed. All Eight of us failed. That was such an important lesson. I never, ever forgot it. And so anytime I felt threatened or anytime I felt, you know what? In this situation I'm in right now, I can see a point 10 seconds down the road where I might feel threatened. I would draw my weapon mm. just in case. It happened twice, just in case. Then we went through something you've, I'm sure, seen on TV. It's a shooting gallery. So you've got your, you've got your gun out, and the instructor's right behind you, and he's got his hand on your shoulder, and a guy pops up in a window, and he's got a, a machine gun, and you go, bang, bang, and he plops down. And then a woman pops up holding a baby over here, and you know you have to make sure not to shoot her. If you shoot her, you fail. 
I have chills thinking about it. It, it, it taking me back. I haven't talked about this in decades. And so um, crazy as it sounds, I got 100%. I was like a friggin' marksman. And yet, the funny thing is on the very first day of, of the weapons training, um, like I say, there were eight of us. And the instructor said, anybody here not own a gun? And I, I raised my hand. And I kind of looked around and I was the only guy that had his hand up. He goes, you don't own a gun. And I said, truth be told, I've never actually touched a real gun. And he goes, oh my God, okay. We're gonna have to start from the very beginning. And I ended up testing first in the class to the point where one of the instructors said, you should give some thought to competitive shooting. Wow. And so I did, and I ended up like winning trophies in skeet. I just had a knack for it. I had a very steady hand. And um, it served me well. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting about the scenarios they set up, like you said, at the motel and with the blindfold. Is it a matter of, like, how fast can you process information and make decisions with the available information? Yes. Is that kind of what they're That's testing That's exactly for? what it is. And not just in the shooting, but in the driving, too. You know, you might have seen on, on one of these old-time cop shows, like, Adam 12, for example, I've, I've seen this on Adam 12. Um, you're, you're speeding toward three red lights, right? There, there are three lanes. You're in the middle lane, red, red, red. And one second before you get to the red lights, one of them turns green. And you have to swerve as fast as you can to the green light. And if you go through the lane with the red light, you fail. And if you fail, you can't go overseas. And so it was the same thing with the driving, man. I aced the counterterrorism driving. I aced it to the point where um, they came up to me afterwards and said, when are you leaving for, for overseas? And I said, oh, I still have two more months. And they said, we want you to take the advanced driving class. It's out in the Nevada desert. He said, that's real counterterrorism driving. And so I went out there and it was like driving over sand dunes. And what do you do if you get stuck in the sand? And... It was, it was good stuff. Mm. I learned a lot. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the interview. Um, as you could probably tell, this is a brand new channel. So if you got anything out of this at all, please like the video. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought. Tell me who you'd like to see on the show. Um, I see every like, I read every comment, and I appreciate all of it, especially in the beginning, because as you know, that kind of support goes a long way on these platforms. So most importantly, I have some awesome guests coming up in the future for interviews. Um, so please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of them. But again, thank you for your time. Appreciate the support and hope to see you again soon.